quick introduction to Fusion 360. We're not going to go through crazy details, but just to show you guys what is the main advantages and how, uh, like why uh, I think that this will be kind of perfect for uh, for every frame maker or anybody who wants to make glasses. That will be the perfect software. And hopefully, if everything goes well, in a few maybe years or months, we're going to have a nice uh, community of people who are all making glasses and all making fusion. And if somebody's having some problems, there's going to be a plenty of plenty of people who can help. Okay, so let me let me start. So I think the 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 most important thing for me for the fusion or one of the most important things that even if this is the basically engineering software it's still crazy intuitive so it's very easy to just uh, doing some uh, sketches and it's easy to learn new stuff because everything is always explained even if you go on some uh, icon anywhere it's going to immediately explain you how to do and what is that button doing and everything so i think that's that's quite good because compared to other engineering software that I'm using. Currently, this is the, the best one. And uh, for the, definitely for starters. And the second thing I really, really, really like about Fusion is the fact that you can create, uh, everything is cloud-based. So you have all your data in the same place. So it's super easy to keep all your frames in the same place. So if you look here on the left side of the, of the screen, you can see my, uh, all the frames I created with revisions and basically with all the all the history and it's super easy to just go back to something and uh, change the dimensions or anything. Uh, the other thing I really like about all this is the fact that if you have your frame you can easily export the whole thing and send it to somebody who, was, who is also using Fusion. So they're going to get a file with all the history and they're going to get a file with all your preparation for CNC and everything. And if you have some issues so that that, that person can help you to modify whatever it doesn't work or help you to, to sort out the problem and send it back and you're going to end up again with, with a live file and you can use it later and you can still modify it and you have the, all the history. And I think the now the quite important, quite uh, probably the most important thing is the designing itself. So if you want, I can, I can now quickly show you, uh, I think it's going to be maybe interested for people who planning to do bespoke frames or making the frames basically for somebody and it will be probably based on a photo. So I can quickly show you without crazy amount of explanation, step by step what I'm doing, how easy it is to design some frame. So you basically, starting with a fresh canvas and what I'm usually doing is just the important thing for the bespoke customers always for me is just a good photo of the customer's face and also uh, just to get the measurements right it's important to have some sort of uh, measurements so uh, I can show you what I'm doing I'm usually just basically create like um, imagine if you have the real life photo of somebody and you just start sketching with a with a pencil on the top of the photo so this is almost exactly the same process except it's digital so you can just insert the picture well you, we're going to use my face for this for this thing you're just gonna i have it saved on my file and you can just insert a photo of yourself and the important thing is that you need to know what is the what is the size of the photo because you want to design your frame in scale. So normally I'm just using the basically asking people to just send me the picture with some business card or something next to them so I can get easily the measurements because I know that every single business card uh, business card or credit card or driving license is 85.6 uh, millimeter width or 3.3 inches so I can super quickly just adjust this to calibrate the whole photo based on just this size six and this is giving me now the real size of my face if I just want to double check the easy thing that I know my PD is about 62 63 and it's perfectly matching and now I can just start creating some design based on my face. So I'm going to start with a 
just with a center line, which is going to be somewhere here. Then I know that I want a certain width of the frame and it might be slightly oversized. So I'm going to create a, here the lock and just basically now any wavy shape in between, which is going to be my top line. This is, uh, this is going to be my bottom line. And I can just create quickly lens. And then just with this, I can start like a, it's extremely easy. So you basically just dragging points and moving them around as you want. And if you, if you starting to doing this kind of stuff with a, like a, it's, it's something close to maybe illustrator or something. So you can just drag in points. And if you feel like you don't have enough control of this, you can just click on a point and you have a handles and you can play with the, with the shape of the curve which is super easy. So I'm just going to create some quick shape. Yeah, this is maybe I'm going to redo this bottom line with a more with a few more points. So you can see like a basically I draw a super super rough sketch of some frame and because I want to see how it looks like in general. So I'm just going to take that that part, do the extrusion six millimeters, which is going to be the thickness of your of your material. And this is giving me the left side of the frame. And because I want to see the, because I don't want to do both sides and uh, messing and playing with that in a sketch. So I'm going to just create this and mirror the whole thing. And that's basically now my, uh, I'm just going to create this and this. So you can see basically now some super quick frame and this is just a style. So you can go, of course, back to the sketch and you don't like the top line. So you can uh, brow line so you can change the brown line completely. Let's make it straight on the top, finish sketch. And you can play with this absolutely quickly. So you don't need to start sketching in Illustrator or AutoCAD or anything. You can basically start here. And you know that you will have the frame in a basically the right size. So if I just double check now, the overall width of the frame is 152 millimeters. So it's slightly oversized, not crazy oversized, but this can give you a little bit overview how easy it is to sketch something. This is of course just a just the start, and it doesn't have any any. Uh, things like a, a hinges recess or anything, but it's quite easy. And even if you think like you want to change the size quickly, you can just select all this and go to modify, change scale, select the point, and you can quickly change it, let's say 10, uh, slightly small, let's say 5%, and you can put 0 0.95, and immediately your whole frame is smaller. So that can give you quick run and uh, just to make sure that the frame is correct, it's best to just uh, disable again the photo and then focus purely, purely on a shape. So you don't have this uh, lumpy, lumpy shape and you can just pull it. And if you want exact numbers, so you can always uh, do the offset and following the top line or bottom line and playing with that. So that is very easy to, to do this. So what I wanted to show you here that you don't need to start designing your frame in anything else but this. And eventually you will get into a point when you will have your frame. You're going to create yourself a little, uh, this is the stock material. So you're going to place it on your stock material. So you will know that you're not going to hit the screws or anything. Then of course you can design yourself a sides and <clears throat> go straight to manufacture where you can create a g-code for every single step of the frame how to machine it this one is fairly complex but the good thing about this whole thing that you can basically if you once create a good setup for your manufacturing you can always copy paste all these operations 
for the new frame. So you don't need to create the speeds and feeds and everything for the machining, but you can just take the one that it was working once and then literally just selecting the outline, inline and uh, outline, the lenses, the hinges recess, just pressing on a, on a right uh, area of your frame and that's basically it and that's going to help you to get quickly to just like a, having a lot of uh, different designs and so yeah that is a quite quite cool function and also I found it quite uh, quite helpful if you start doing um, you can easily already send this to your customers and you can of course change if you want to you can change the color or uh, change the material but also and maybe for your customers it will be interesting that you can just put on a uh, you can just put the material that you actually have so if you have already acetate choose for your customer you can just put basically slap on the front decal which is going to be with your color of the material and basically create a quick overview of how these frames might look like in a approximately in a right color and you can just change if you wanna if you wanna change the size again you can go back to sketch and then make the whole thing slightly larger and create super easily several versions of one design and you can let your customer to choose which one he likes the best. And I give you several several options. Um, <clears throat> uh, what is also quite cool things about this that if you don't wanna if you're designing something something new and you wonder a little bit how the frame will fit, it's quite easy to just import some uh, 3D file for a uh, human skull and you can quickly just try how the frame appro approximately fits. And this one is, as you can see, probably I made a bridge too narrow, so it's sitting slightly off. But it can give you a little bit more overview how the frame looks like, even it doesn't have the base curve right now. It can help you a little bit with the designing and get a get closer to make every single frame fitting well. And yeah, uh, the whole um, the reason why I also choose a fusion is the whole integrated integrated cam system so it's very easy because you can just choose from several operations here which uh, how you want to machine the the frame but i think eventually in uh, i think the class number three i'm going to show you three or four operations that you need for making glasses in general and you don't need anything anything else afterwards and good thing is because this system allow you to do the test before you start actually machining the whole thing on your on your CNC. So you can just set up your material and simulate the whole thing to see like a, how it's going to look like if there is some mistake uh, in your G code or anything. You can see the step by step that there is no mistake and it should look okay and especially you need to be kind of sure that you're not going to hit anything how uh, any any mounting system for your acetate so i found this this quite quite cool and helpful definitely and having the good success rate of your of your frames um what else i had um also you can you can try basically do the whole frame put together it's not super essential and it's a bit it's a quite a lot of work to do it the whole frame and but it's also a possibility because you have the full 3d 3d software and you can do whatever you want do you ever uh, model the base curve into the uh designs or is that just uh unnecessary because <clears throat> i did it a few times and uh it was quite actually quite a lot of work and I was trying to figure out a way how I can just create 
like a stock material with already base curve and they just cut out out of this uh, like uh, the shape of the frame so it works quite well but I never had a basically use for, for that because for CNC it's not gonna work and yeah it was a once I because I wanted to do the the render so I did the base curve but that was it but it's doable mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I have a question. If you're if you're about to send your file for CNC or any cutting in general, does it have to be a uh, flat like zero curve? Uh, it's best to use basically having the material prepared like this. Yeah. As you can Got see, it. like it's it's best to have just basically everything flat and just to model to where you want your nose pads. There is a little bit of like a scalloping on the bottom, but always go for the flat. Thank you. And how about, uh, do you ever bother trying to model in the groove as opposed to try and cut the groove on a machine or? Um, yeah, I try it. It works really well because it's just uh, basically create a V groove anywhere basically on a frame and then just follow the lens. So it, it works quite well. But uh -huh. it was a little bit of problem to find the right tool for that because you need to use a quite small diameter tool uh, yeah. for cutting the threads, and that was it, actually it was it was okay. But I found uh, yeah, it a okay. bit uh, tedious to change the tool just for that, and then I was really scared that if I'm not going to make a mistake in 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 uh, programming the G code for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, what is the? Sorry, I'm I'm really. You know, just at the beginning of this, but what's the minimum amount of material you can leave? And do you think, in terms of acetate, in terms of thickness, from the the bottom of the groove to the outside of the shell, uh, in the finished product? Well, normally, like a, there is a few things. Like a, if I'm just doing the back cut, which means a frame like this, I'm just leaving zero point thirty five yeah. millimeters on the bottom, which is basically the the like a little layer of the material. Yeah. And that I know it will perfectly hold the shape in a, the frame in a place and it's not going to vibrate too much to mess up the edges. But the uh -huh. moment when I'm doing the cut from both sides, I think I have here a few frames with a... I can actually show you here. Um, this, this is the... the well, that was super complex one actually. Um, then if, if, I'm, I'm, if, if I'm doing the cut, cut from, from both sides, sides I need, need to leave a little bit like a taps because it doesn't hold that well and mm -hmm. I can't be 100% sure that the frame won't move and that's, that's why, why you get like a, yeah. like a pre-drill pre, uh, pre holes in the material and everything so I'm, I can be 100% sure I can swap the material, change the sides and the, uh -huh. it cannot move anywhere and I don't need to figure out the zero uh, x and y so it's, it's doable and like I prefer not to use steps because it's leaving a little bit of marks on a, like a when uh -huh. machining because when you're going up and down and it depends how the machine is rigid, it's always a little bit of marks. So if you just leave the, the material on the bottom, it works really better. Yeah, yeah, okay. And in terms of curving, if a base curve, are you using plates or molds or um, whatever? Or? Sorry, John. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I have, have uh, for the base curve, I'm just bending, uh, okay. reheating the whole frame and then base, uh, bend them in a plywood base curve mold. Uh, like a uh, okay. Is this something you've made yourself or you could CNC make yourself? Yeah, do you think, I think or? It's, a, it's, a, it's a fairly, fairly simple shape. It's uh, because it's, it's just. just it was, it was just important, important to have, have the cylindric shape, shape so, so it's, it's not, not just a base curve in one uh, one direction. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. For a rotating machine, that that shape, but it's um, it's doable. To, it's possible to do it at home. Uh huh. But I think if you have a one inch plywood or twenty five mil, it's uh, does the uh... sorry, Thomas. Oh, um, I was wondering for post processors. Like, uh, do you have to like install a post processor to get the the uh, G code to really, correct for your CNC machine? The, the moment when or you, is it? Uh, 
I think, I think even, even in a, a, even in a free, free version, version of, uh, of Fusion, you, you always have the manufacturing possibilities here. And you can, can I think, think maybe if you, if you have, have a free version, version you don't have the super fancy ones like uh, some crazy 3D skull thing and uh, super effective clearing. But normally you can have it all here. And it's kind of fun because, uh, as you can see here on this one, I already have the manufacturing setup for this, which is just a quick scalloping, uh, recess for the hinges, lenses, and outside. But if I know that I made this setup and this setup is better, okay. I can just basically copy this whole setup and put it here in this frame. And basically use it as as my uh, setup for this frame. So I don't need to basically go through programming every single thing, and it's just basically scalp. I need I can just select this, and I need to scalp this shape, and that's it for me. So it's kind of like a, once you do it correctly, basically your setup, it's super easy to implement it on any other design. What size end bill are you using? Uh, usually for the fronts, it's a uh, three point uh, three mil or three point one seven five uh, one eight inch uh, single foot. Okay. I think it's like the best. Quick, quick best, question. Best tool for the for for plastics. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, Alex. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I'm trying to build up uh, nose pads uh, or, or on, on tempo where, where the hinges attached to the frame, um, should I fuse the, the additional plastic on before I cut it or after? Right now, I, I, I'm trying to do it after, but I, it'll probably be less messy if I do it before and then, and then stick it into my CNC. Yeah, that is like, like a, a lot of, there's like a two ways. ways. Uh, you, the, the one way is, as you're doing this, basically cut the frame as a, as a flat thing and then uh, glue two chunks of material on an area where the bed's supposed to be and then shape them afterwards. Uh, or you can just uh, glue them on the beginning and then machine them out when, you, when you're doing the, the scalloping of the, of the face. So because if you imagine you're doing the scalloping here on the top, I'm always uh -huh. taking a little bit off the top of the material just to make sure that the yeah. recess are having, having the perfect height for the, for the hinges. So you basically, yeah. when you do the scalloping, you can see that it's going nicely on the top of the nose pads. Yeah. And what are you going to end up if you don't want to spend extra, let's say five minutes to have this shape with, a, with a no two marks, you can, you can spend like an extra five minutes for the, for the finishing. But usually I just end up with a little bit marks on a, on a nose pad, but it's probably 15 seconds with a file to get, get rid of them and they can go straight to the barrels. I got it, I got it, thank you, thank yeah. you. And also you can, like eventually, there's a, also a way how to program the nose, uh, nose pads play and machine them out. But I found mm -hmm. that uh, it's much easier to just do it afterwards on a, on a machine. Mm -hmm. it, it's also doable, you just, it's a little bit more, uh, it's slightly more complex, complex, uh, 3D modeling because you need to create like an extra shape here in a shape of triangle and then uh, ex um, basically follow the line of the frame. So it's a, it's a bit complex, but it's doable also doing the splay. Gotcha. Is there any other question? Because I think the next uh, next week on the, on the class, I'm just going to work you properly through the whole how to how to design something or how like uh, what I'm using and what is the like a perfect amount of steps, how to do this. Is there anything like a, in general question about fusion or anything that I can help you with? Um, I had a, so I signed up for fusion. So I paid for the license mm -hmm. uh, just recently and they offered a, just a free tutorial uh, webinar with a guy, uh, maybe in Australia, I think he was. And he was not from an optical background, but I sort of explained what I was trying to do. And he was suggesting that it would be somehow simpler, but I'm not sure of the reasoning that we, for me to try and design 
like in surface as opposed to in solid. Um, but that I haven't got my head around that yet. But it, it seems to me a lot more complicated. But the, yeah, I, I need to go back to them and try and understand the reasoning. But it's it's not a bad solution. It's just uh, with this solution you're gonna uh, start missing a little bit because you're gonna really play with dimensions. You're gonna be it's more like a freehand drawing almost. Ah, uh, yeah. And it's a. And it's a it's a bit trickier. It's it's really great solution when you when you try to do something very organic, like a like a let's say super rough surface on a frame or something like this, to just create your okay. frame in this way and then convert it into into a surface and then you can play with the surface almost like you can make like a little mountains on the surface and stuff like this and uh, yeah, yeah. And that's that's absolutely perfect way how to how to do it. But I think it's always kind of better to start with, with normal, normal way like this because even when you have your frame like this, uh, you can still do some like a smart thing when, when you have your frame and you know that if you if you're measuring the bridge width, you can select that yeah. this is going to be your fixed point, and then put the dimensions between center and that point. So you basically here create, and now it's telling me it's a 12 millimeter. So I can make it uh, maybe let's say 11, and I can change basically the bridge size just with really changing one number. And it's kind of like a for me this is this is quite helpful. And also I will know that the locks I'm gonna make a I have designed for let's say 12 millimeter size. So I can just make this 12 to just to make sure that it's gonna fit. And the moment when you start playing with hinges, it's good to work in this in this setup instead of uh, just surfaces mm, yeah yeah okay yeah it seems somehow more logical to have it as a solid but anyway that's cool that explains yeah it's a it's a, it's a bit more kind of like an engineering block you can you can design your frame completely by freehand but it's just like adding a little bit more engineering stuff just, just to make sure that everything's gonna fit perfectly So this is this is yeah this is kind of like a how quickly this 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 can be done and and yeah so at the the next next session we're gonna go through through these these details and I'm gonna walk you through why I'm doing this and why is uh, why is what the following one I think we can we can play a little bit with the with us uh, with the hinges to just go through all the types of hinges and how to properly place them in a in a on, on a frame and all this kind of stuff. Um, I don't think I'm going to do crazy amount of details about like a, when you, for example, trying to pre-drill the holes for the rivets and stuff like this, because I'm not usually doing that because I'm trying to avoid changing tools uh, on CNC, I'm trying to do everything at least like a, with a one tool, maximum two. But if anybody has some questions, I did it a few times, so I can definitely help also with that. I had a question. Sure about um, basically the G-code will depend on the type of tools that you have on the CNC, right? Uh, yeah, if you, for example, here, uh, on this one, if I select all these operations and press uh, post-process, I can just choose like a, because it, it, if you remember the, the, all these uh, all these operations are done with the one tool. Okay. So you can see it's a three point one seven five, so it's a one eight inch. Mm. And I can just export all of them in the same in the same G code, so it's gonna basically cut the whole frame in a in the same operation. If I will have some special tool, maybe with a round uh, round head for some uh, some finishing touches, I will probably just create uh, two different G codes. And do one operation, change the tool, double check if it's in the right height, and then do the second operation. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, right. I'm not sure if I answered your question. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, for sure you did. I, I think because right now I work with the CNC and um, we have Fusion files. I just don't know how to use it myself, but we use Fusion, and we deal like I think we have at least three tools, different tool changes. 
Um, and it does cause us a lot of problems. So I was just wondering if that was, well, I'm hearing you talk about the fact that you're trying to reduce the amount of tools that you use in one, mm. in, in one fabrication. So I was wondering if the, the G code is going to depend on the tools that you have on hand. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think there's also a way that you can actually create a one G code with a several tool changes. But it all depends afterwards how how it's set up and how it's set up the actually the, the tool change if and normally you it's a, it's a, it's done for the for the machines where if you change the tools it will have already set up heights of the tool. So yeah, you, yeah, we, we calibrate it before starting. Yeah. Um, but it does cause some problems from time to time. So yeah, trying yeah. to find a way to work better <laughs> in a better way. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it is a well, yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to avoid that because it's as you say, it's a, it's causing quite a lot of problems quite often. And if you because if you do it kind of smart way, of course there might be some corners that you cannot do with a with a three millimeter cutter. But normally you can do most of the stuff with a with a flat head three millimeter cutter without without okay. some issues. Mm -hmm. and awesome, I'm, thank you. And, and I'm glad that there are no hinges smaller than three millimeters, so you don't need to change two for. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. No worries. Uh, sorry, could I? Sure. Can I ask one more question? Yeah. Um, as a freelance designer, that uh, doesn't have anything to do with manufacturing. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but I I'm not getting into the manufacturing process myself. Mm. Uh, since, since I'm new to manufacturing, um, how deep do I have to go into uh, learning about uh, all these, uh, well, um, how do I say this? All these things about um, manufacturing, CNC, uh, all you're showing this, this past. I think like if, you, if you're just doing design, you don't need to go like a crazy deep. It's just always good to have some, uh, some little bit of knowledge to understand how... Yeah like a how to place hinges and stuff like this. So you're not going to design a frame that is basically impossible to make or something like this. No, of course. But yeah. in, in general, I don't think you need to do, uh, go crazy deep. And even if you do probably just a design, I'm not sure if, it's, if this is going to be the correct software for you. But in general, if you, if you stick with something slightly simpler uh, fr frames, that's, that's still a that's still good, good choice. Yeah. Well, I've been already using Fusion for at least six months now. I just haven't got into this part. I haven't gotten this deep into manufacturing processes and all that. That's that's my question, basically. I think like if you if you if you stick with me for the for the next several weeks, I think we're gonna go through all the all the essentials, how to how to design frame uh, to make it yourself, and I think that can give you a little bit more. Uh, little bit more background and a little bit more like a knowledge how to uh, how to don't forget some some essentials when you're designing frame yeah great sounds good <laughs> and, uh, I'm gonna try to basically like every time we're gonna do this this kind of session or we're gonna design some frame and with all these steps uh, you can download the, the fusion file afterwards and you can basically see how it was done and if I'm gonna copy here in a in the frame the whole g code or all the steps you can just go through like you can open yourself this kind of let's, let's say this file this process of scalloping the frame and you can look at all the numbers and just basically to have an understanding a little bit how it works and what i select and all this kind of stuff so you're gonna have like a all this all this thing on your computer and you can look at it anytime nice uh Thank you. Thank you so much for the time. No Thank worries. you. Anything else? Is there anything, guys, that you will be uh, like a uh, you would like to like uh, I would like to uh, would want from me to add for the next like a uh, classes or is there anything that you would like to know or? I actually have one quick question. I don't think I was in and out. Sorry. Um, no do you ever cut reliefs into the bridge or the eye wires to make it easier to press in the base curve or to bump the bridge? Or do you just keep them flat? I'm just keeping them flat. Okay. And it presses and holds its shape fine. Uh, yeah. 
it depends on like, which awesome. brands are you are you using and sometimes it's a it's a bit tricky because a lot of people are having like old school presses when you cannot right. put your frame when you already have the nose pads in right so it's a so, it's yeah. sometimes a bit tricky but if you have the mm -hmm. right press with a little bit of cutout for the for the nose pads it's it's not a really big problem perfect and perfect thanks for doing this this has been great <laughs> no no um yeah the the nose yeah nose pads is a, are a bit tricky uh, the yeah the bridge bumping is a bit tricky nose pads are a bit tricky but in general uh, the even the creating the base curve if you're doing one off or if you're doing like a, maybe just a few frames it's a bit tedious because normal industrial procedure is to having basically negative shape of your frame with the base curve and you can heat up your frame and press it against that mold and it, it works really well but Nobody having uh, is having the time to actually create that mold for every single frame, so you are relying a little bit right. on your hands when you're doing the pressing the base curve. But right. it's not it's awesome. impossible. It's just like a, I'm I'm still kind of scared if I'm doing crazy thin frame and I need to give give it base four curve. It's always a little bit scary. <laughs> and and it's great if yeah. somebody oh. is having the workshop and also having the glazing machine because you can cut yourself the lenses first. And it's going to hold your shape of the frame and you can just now uh, afterwards make a perfect base curve. Perfect. Yeah, that makes total sense. So awesome. I have a, I have a quick question sure. about um, the types of uh, hinges that you're going to show us. Is mm -hmm. it more of like a heat sunken uh, hinge or is it a rivet? Because uh, you said that you're not you're not cutting you're not cutting rivet holes. Uh, I'm not uh, cutting the rivet holes, but uh, I'm gonna basically I think it's gonna be on a lesson three or four. Um, okay. Preparing basically the, all the types of hinges that are normally available to buy. So it's gonna be heat heat sunk with a round and a square base. It's gonna yeah. be the standard wayfarer uh, hinges with for riveting and yeah. narrow fascia with hinges. Okay, awesome. Because uh, I create like a little little overview to for people to understand where the hinges needs to be placed and mm -hmm. how they need to basically um, put a little bit of uh, like a, what kind of space they need on the end of the locks and then on the end of the locks a little bit for uh, for tumbling and stuff like this. So it's going to be for all this and a little bit of guidance if you have your special hinges because I know I'm buying hinges from several companies and creating always the new new shape for the hinges and so I'm going to show you how to create your own library of hinges so when you design your frame you can just open the file in infusion take the take the 2d sketch of your hinge and place it in your model and it's going to be perfect uh, perfectly perfectly placed excellent thank you no worries. Um, anything else on your mind, guys? <laughs> thank you very much for doing this. This has been uh, very informative. Yeah, thank you. Looking forward to the next one, too. Thank you so much. Uh, no worries, guys. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm super glad to do this, and I'm, I'm sorry it's not like a perfectly prepared because I wasn't. I realized um, I was speaking way faster than I expected. So this, like the first introduction, is supposed to take like a 35 minutes, and I think I done it in 15. So uh, <laughs> uh, the next next class is going to be a bit more focused on a certain topic, so it's not going to be all over the place. So hopefully, that's going to make more sense and it's going to be better. But you know, the first one is always tricky. Yeah. So are you going to set up a group? So we can already maybe hit each other up with some questions as we go along. Uh, sure. Like uh, the, the there is a, there is right now the WhatsApp group. You can just join through the through link, and everybody had a ah, sweet. Had, had a possibility to send any message. So if anybody having some questions or they wanna they wanna have some suggestions, what should be maybe the next session or something, you can just drop the message there and. Uh, there's going to be all the information if there's going to be some something cancelled or anything, you know. And I kind of hope that like this is going to be the base of the of the new generation of fusion uh, frame makers. Uh, yeah. 
So guys, if you don't have any more questions, I can just um, we can just finish it today. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a I'm gonna save the video out of this, so you can double check it later and uh, look at some some stuff. But I think the next video is gonna be more more important with a, with a proper Great. design. Thank you so much. No worries. Thanks, man. Some thanks, man. Yeah, no thanks. Worries. Looking forward to next week. Guys, see you. Have a great evening, so morning, you. or whatever you have in your country. <laughs> Thank you. So you as well. Perfect. Thanks a lot, guys. See you soon. Yeah, yeah. See you next week. Bye, Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.